Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to go ahead and go over the popular interview question for balancing uh, or validating bracket and parenthesis combinations. So an example of uh, what that might be is the following. So if you're looking at my, my uh, text editor here, uh, see how the text editor automatically closes the appropriate brackets here? Um, so this is what we would consider valid because every uh, closing bracket is matched up with an opening bracket um, when it gets uh, iterated through. An example of an incorrect or invalid or unbalanced uh, bracket and parenthesis combination might look like the following. We'll just do that. See how um, in this, this particular scenario the curly bracket is matched up with the parenthesis that is invalid. So in this tutorial we're going we're gonna to figure out how to write code, in this case it's going to be written in Java, to determine uh, the, the validity of each of these strings. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new project. I'm going to go ahead and create one on my desktop. So we're going to go make directory test project and navigate into it. And Let's go ahead and touch main driver dot Java and touch brackets dot Java. So inside of our text editor here, let's go ahead and open up that project that we just created. So let's go ahead and we'll start by working with the uh, actual brackets class. And this is going to be the class that crunches through uh, the strings. So let's go ahead and do import java.util. And we're doing this because this is the class, uh, this is the import that includes stacks, which is going to be a very critical part of this tutorial. I'm going to do public class brackets. We're going to do private string bracket. So this is going to be the string uh, that is passed in. And we're going to go ahead and pass that into the constructor method. All right. So now we've got the basic stuff down. What really matters here is our validate function. So we're going to do validate our public boolean validate. And the whole purpose of this function is to check the string, uh, which is brackets. So let's go ahead and start this. So we're expecting a return value no matter what. So let's go ahead and assume that it, uh, at the start, the string is valid. We're going to be proving that it's not valid. So let's say uh, Boolean result is true. And then at the end here, we're going to do return result. So as of right now, uh, everything is going to be true. We're just going to disprove it. So let's go ahead and create a new stack. Okay, now we're just uh, prepping all of our data types here. And then we're going to create a, uh, a character variable which represents the current character of the string and the previous character of the string. We'll go into that a little further in a second here. So now it's time to start uh, looping through the string that's passed. And that can be done with the following. So we can do for int i equals 0 because the string index starts at 0. i is less than uh, this dot brackets dot length. So we're getting the string length. And we're increasing the uh, character by 1 every time. So the first thing that we can do at this point in time is we can figure out what the current character is. So we're going to say current equals this dot brackets dot character at i. And I'll go ahead and get the current character, one character. That's all we want to care about. We're, since we're kind of doing a tokenization, we only want one, one token at a time. So this is where our logic comes into place. We are going to be looking out for whether it's an opening bracket or a closing bracket. In both these scenarios, two different things are going to happen. 
So the first scenario is it's an open bracket. So we can say if current equals parenthesis. Notice that I am using the single quote because it is a car, not a string. If it's equal a parenthesis or if it's equal a uh, square bracket, oops, or if the current character equals a, a curly bracket. And again, these are all open brackets. We're not worrying about the closed brackets quite yet. So if we determine that the current character is a open bracket, we are going to push it into our stack. So now the current character is now the top part of the stack. So pretty easy. So the next step, the next thing that we got to look out for is if the current character is a closed bracket. So we're going to say if current is equal to closed parenthesis or current equals uh, closed square bracket or current equals closed curly bracket. So now our current character is one of the closing brackets. Uh, what we need to do here is we first need to determine that our stack has data in it. Because what if somebody passes in a string that is only a single closing bracket? We need to first verify that other brackets were provided first. And that could be done by doing the following. So if it is empty, then our result is equal to false. Because like I said, there are no opening brackets in the stack, meaning that uh, we either have too many closing brackets or we only have a closing bracket. And in this case, our bracket and parentheses combinations are not balanced. So if it doesn't enter that condition, the next condition that we want to look out for is the else. And that means so far so good. We are going to look at the previous character uh, that was in our string, which is going to be at the top of the stack. So we're going to say previous equals character. We're going to cast it as a character, stack.peak. So if you're unfamiliar with peak, what it does is it just looks at the last uh, inserted stack element. It does not pop it off the stack. It just looks at it. So we're looking at the previous character, and then we can determine the following. If, we're going to do a second set of parentheses, current equals closing parenthesis, and previous equals opening parenthesis, then that's a valid scenario. Or, again, we're outside of the uh, inner uh, parenthesis here, or, and then we're going to open up another parenthesis. We're going to say current equals to close square bracket and previous equals open square bracket, and that's another valid. And then we're going to do or, and another parenthesis set here, current equals closing curly bracket and current. Uh, not current, previous equals open curly bracket. So what that means is each of these match. So the current matches the previous, uh, in which case uh, we have a valid, a valid uh, balanced bracket combination. So when that scenario happens, we can go ahead and pop off the last item of the stack. We've determined that it is good. It is no longer necessary to keep it. So we can pop it off or remove it. So with that said, there's one more thing we need, to, we need to look out for. If by the time we've iterated through the entire string of brackets, we need to go ahead and check if the stack is empty. So if the stack is not empty, that means that there is a lingering bracket um, that was not balanced. So in that case, 
we can say result equals false. So just like that, we have our uh, balancer here. So going back into your main driver, let's go ahead and set that up for a minute here. So we can say uh, public class main driver. We can say public static void main. We can say string args. And in here, what we want to do is we want to say bracket b equals new brackets. And we're going to go ahead and pass it in a string here. Let's go ahead and say that we're going to pass in a balance string to start. All right. So I'm going to use spaces here just to, so that way you can see better. Uh, spaces will not interrupt our validation because uh, technically this is still balanced. So let's go ahead and put a semicolon there and we're going to say console dot, not console, this is JavaScript, sorry. We're going to say system dot out dot print line. We're going to say brackets is valid and then we're going to say um, b dot validate because it returns a boolean. So, the next thing that we want to do is we want to go back into our terminal. We're going to go ahead and compile it from the command line. We're going to say Java C for compile. We're going to say main driver. There is a typo because I used a lowercase s. Go ahead and make that uppercase here. Try it again. Again, there is some kind of problem of some sort. So to correct the problem, uh, it, it was actually a problem with my Java compiler. I had tested this on a different computer and it worked fine. So it, it was something to do with the version. Uh, a, an easy way to fix the uh, inability to cast the uh, peak value as a character, you can actually make the stack of type character. And then it will allow you to use it. So by removing the uh, car character casting here and adding a character um, for the stack type, it did resolve the issue. So let's go ahead and test it out now. So going back into here, we have a valid uh, bracket set. It's balanced. So let's go ahead and do Java C and then main driver Java, and that'll go ahead and compile the main driver and everything that is connected to the main driver, so in this case brackets.class. So now we can run Java main driver with not, without anything, no extension. So when we hit enter, it says brackets is valid. So let's go ahead and see what happens when we add another bracket into the mix here. We're just adding another close bracket. We're going to compile it and we're going to run it. And we can see that it is false. We can also um, add another opening bracket, for example, if we want. And it'll give us the same result. Again, it's false. So as you can see, uh, by using the stack method to push and pop stuff off the stack, you can easily uh, parse through a string to see if your brackets are valid. And this is a popular interview question for uh, software engineering positions, programming positions, because it tests your ability to a uh, little bit think out of the box. It tests your knowledge of stacks. Um, maybe you're looking for a web API position. It, um, it You can further pursue this knowledge and put it towards uh, JSON parsing if you want. Uh, there's, there's a lot of different usage uh, scenarios for this.